I guess the first thing that we wanted to talk about was, you know, could you tell us a little bit about the Brazil popper scene? Popper scene here is pretty developed. Uh, more probably 19, 18% of the stars make at least an event a week and with minimum weight players. Many stars get 20, 30 players in the most popular places. Uh, that's the paper. Most of the time I play only online and online we do have two groups on WhatsApp where we play and test things together. Uh, one group have uh, 20 or 30 players, only grinders. The other group has around 200 players. Uh, we help each other and that's it. It's a very good place to play pauper. Yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah, here is a very good format because you don't need that much money and your cards don't rotate out, so people like it. And uh, they invest money into it. Uh, many players have like all the decks of the format and when a new deck starts to play, like my tribe, players rush to the stores to buy all the deck and build uh, all at once and not need to worry the deck anymore. Um, yeah, that's how I like to do it. <laughs> yeah. It, I was one of the players years ago, even playing online, I had all the pauper decks, many of them I had like two or three of the same deck, because I used to loan it to some friends to play, and they liked this. Many players do this here in Brazil, so cheap, and the cards won't get away of the format. So, how do you guys, when you're testing or brewing, like building new decks, how do you guys coordinate that among, amongst each other? Yeah, many times when we get an idea, we do share our idea with each other, and we test. If the idea is good, we start helping each other, and more people get into the deck to test, like this stripe deck. I had the idea on Wednesday, I believe. Uh, one day after I built the deck, made, made some results, I believe was a 3-2 or a 4-1, and Carves liked the idea, started test with, testing with me. Three days after, uh, I already had a good list, making five uh, the first list of tribe that got after the balance two days after that cards found found out that the deck needed deep analysis and after some leagues i just throw it in the deep analysis and started to take shape we basically do the steps with every deck we find out that is good uh, in the format. We heard that sharing the list and having more brains to develop a list is more effective than just hiding it and trying to develop it all by yourself. It takes too many resources from one person, time to test for just one person. This is a, a bit lit Little is slow, slower than good grinders testing the same same list or lists based on that list. Uh, right now we are play testing for the Gurmag Storm from Caleb. We do want to refine that list so it can be so reliable. There are three persons testing the car. The, the I am the fourth, and we will start today with it. So do you feel That's like that deck has uh, has potential to be a, a great deck? Yeah, it has potential to be a tier 1 deck. It beats strong, it 
this guy and if it has a good hand it can beat pretty much any deck because you can combo on turn one and that's basically how storm played on times yeah so it has very a uh, very good potential and i like it it, it is as fast as Prime or a, a little bit faster, a little bit less constant on the actual list of Caleb. I think that that can get some constants and will be a tier 1 deck. Right now it is a tier 2, maybe a tier 3 pauper deck, but I think it can go to tier 1. So how long do you guys put how much time do you put into a deck before you feel like you're ready to you know take it out into the into the field i feel combo if a deck if i see potential basically to take it to let's put it a uh, challenge or uh, mc key i would put at least three four days of testing eight ten hours a day so this way i can be sure that the cards in the list are the ones or at least close so what resources do you use to get some of the ideas to brew your decks yeah uh tribe uh was a funny idea uh, i believe i was playing tron no stompy i was playing stompy and i faced a uh, guy with an uh, unstrained list with black, green, and blue. He had the combo that uses the Incor yeah. creature. Yeah, the cleric and combo. Yeah, and had the Umbra, the green Umbra. The it umbra. makes the critter, yeah, triple combo, and at a certain point, uh, the game was already lost to him. He just made Tireless Tribe and discarded White out and made the combo out of nowhere with two cards in hand. I looked to that and I thought we don't we don't need the gush to make tribe play. This card alone can fit right into the gush gush play, and power, tribe will be reborn. <laughs> that is it. It's, mm -hmm. it's a solid card. Uh, that was on Wednesday. Uh, one day after, I already had a tribe list close to the one I made up for this challenge. So you said you were you were pretty close by the next day, but it took a lot of testing before you were comfortable enough to uh, to make that kind of run in the challenge. Yeah, um, I needed the testing because that. It's a new field. Uh, Gush is not around anymore. Uh, uh, the Taxon Probe is not around. Uh, many cards are out of the format. And Delver, Delver isn't anymore a problem. And there are other decks to think about. For example, my first tribe list didn't run at, uh, Prismatic Strands, which I think is the best card best aggro on this form. Maybe ag against just guys um, one or two off, but it's still good. And I didn't play any copy of it. I started with Peak to replace probe. the Taxian Probe. Uh, tried four whiteouts, which uh, I find, found out later was not a good idea. You want two or three whiteouts on your hand. 
at any time and many times you don't delete it because the deck plays safe and circular logic replaces the card because it has madness so most of the time you don't need white out it's card so you can combo controls on the lane but you most of the time just go with what you have in your hand <laughs> one of one of the um, things that we noticed about the deck is that with whiteout it allows you to get into counter spell fights a lot more aggressively to make sure your game plan can progress has that been your experience as well yeah uh, uh, on the beginning i was losing to just guys because my posture was not the right one you don't want to hold lands in your hand against control decks you want to in the the counter war before the combo so you want to play all your lands and that's counterintuitive because of tireless and whiteout make it possible to to punish and not be punished by it and that's even better than when we had gush around because so you had to make some counts and you couldn't counter every card you wanted and with white out you just go ahead and counter everything you want and play your land uh, of course you counter cards that do not affect your combo and do not put pressure enough to make your combo a problem. In the counter wars, uh, whiteout is just a monster. You can go to one card in hand and still make the combo work. And you just, against control, you just in the hand, the land on the table and go ahead. Just curious, like, um what other did so you said you tried some other things like were there other directions that you went with the deck before you ended up on what what the list you're playing now yeah i i had modrif temerate with Tatmos priest and i didn't like it it spread is low and throwing up finishing you is good against mono black and some other mid-range decks but it's pretty weak against deck that where you have to put pressure and make the combo fast before they take control uh, i tried the line full comp without the secret of the way but uh, aggro decks just eat you alive because they play fast creatures and make it impossible for you to combo without four or five lands in play because they have two or three answers and the blocker. I didn't have a prismatic strand in so this war was really problem. I lost many matches in the first two days to Stompy. A deck today I think is one of the easiest matchups for tribe i tried seeker without prismatic strands which is an error because uh, you can't put it very well with only eight counter spells and it end up uh, dying to the removals of the other aggro decks i tried the deck with two dizzy spells and two model the mixture but uh, later I found out for example one merchant screw replacing one is a bit better I tried it without mixture but sometimes you need the inside out and you don't have it in your hand and no matter how many can trips you do you don't find it I already digged into 35 cards and didn't found Inside Out or Tireless Tribe in different times. And, 
and that use two model, one merge can't screw, and one this spell, just to make sure. Uh, this way, later on, I had a match, for example, where I transmuted model the mixture into mercant screw into this spell into tribe to get the combo going on oh wow. on the match of <laughs> course think if you don't play test the deck you won't find out this uh, i see many players playing tribe straight up contrips and four tribes and four Maximum they use is Mercant Screw. Don't, don't use this spell, don't use some of the other tools. Giga Draws, for, for example, they, they use it, so you, you need the, the other stuff. Or the, the other way, you win many matches because you can't find the tribe, or you can't tap the the lens of your opponent before making the combo, so uh, I am not uh, as good as, as it looks. Well, it certainly looks good because yourself and two of your fellow Brazilian players are second, third, and fourth on the trophy leaderboard, so you've definitely got some things to share with the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, uh, is this basically hard work because uh, without it you you just won't know how to play the matches, won't be comfortable against some decks uh, Just Sky Forest is a match I hate playing but I played so many matches against Just Sky that I am comfortable if my opponent uh, make one or two mistakes he he is toasted. I think I have over two matches under Tribe right now. Uh, you broke up a little list. bit. How many matches? 200. Oh, wow. Yeah. It, I played the deck for two weeks. Every day I play around five leagues. That's dedication. The <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of yeah. popper. A lot of popper. Yeah, if you want to win, you have to dedicate to to that. Absolutely. Uh, right. Well, Paulo, we're coming up on uh, the end of our time here. Was there anything else you wanted to say or anything you wanted to share with our listeners before we let you go? Yeah, I think this deck is one of the top three of this new metagame. It is very good against Tron, it's good against Jeskai, and insane against Stompy. So I think people should go give it a try. The deck will be popular and well played, maybe more played than before the bands. Wow. So that's it. If people want to give it a try, don't give up on the beginning because you made one or two mistakes. Learn from it and try to not repeat the mistakes. That's the way to go. Thanks so much. Yeah. I thank you guys for, for uh, the chance to talk about time. the deck. Uh, it's a deck I enjoy very much playing and enjoyed every suck developing it. All right. Well, thank you everybody for listening to our interview. Thank you, Paulo, for joining us, and uh, we will see you again soon.